Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy, the NRL Fantasy Fanatic, doing the NRL Super Coach round number 10, coming at you from round number 9. What a big week. I've got some exciting news. We're going to be recapping how we went this week. What are some of the big trades people are bringing in? The forks that we're hitting. We're starting to hit those forks where we can either branch out to the left and make a decision to go one way or branch out to the right and make a decision to go the other way. I think that's going to be for most of the teams out there considering some of the injuries that have occurred. Um, that's going to be all in this video. It's going to be short, sharp, and to the point. What you may notice is that my internet is spooling over and over. That is because the internet in my street has gone completely down. However, good news is is that I actually loaded up the Supercoach page like literally one minute prior to it going down without the knowledge that it was going to go down. Um, I, I'll be able to showcase my team, showcase some of the most traded out players only in my team and the most traded in that aren't in my team. I just won't have the full usual requisite where we evaluate other teams in the top 10 rankings to see what's going well for them and what isn't, what are some of the uh, trades um, that people are doing for players and whatnot. But we're going we're gonna to make it work. We're going to make it work. So if I start from the top, how did I go this week? Actually, exceptionally well. Um, we scored 1,100-ish uh, from the top of my memory. The only caveat to us not doing that well uh, in this week, and, and don't get me wrong, 1,100, if you go back over the years, that would be usually a phenomenal score. The only caveat that we had is that Nathan Cleary as a captain scored a subpar performance. And on the other side of that is that Nico Hines, oh, the one guy individually killing my season, had an absolute blinder and scored 185. I swear that guy is going to be the downfall of my super coach season. We've seen it week in, week out. When Nico Hines gets an average score, I jump up a plethora of ranks. We were in the top 1,000 for some time, and then we've slowly faded because few and far in between of the rounds that Nico underperforms, he's just killing it. Um, we've we've had a little bit of bad luck with Moses, who got eight last week, 34 this week. Stags underperformed. We had some good performance across the paddock with Tyrone May, uh, Suwali, um, Jason Tomalolo got two disallowed tries. He was so close. So close. Um, that could be the difference between, you know, getting a good score like he did, 50, and getting an absolute uh, magnificent or great score. Imagine if either of those tries or both of them uh, were awarded. So, um, we've we've had to evaluate this week, um, given the fact that we had Pappenhausen, but Pappenhausen did get injured. This team that you're seeing right now is the trades that I've already made so if we look at the trades that i've made this week i don't know if it's going to load up unfortunately it doesn't look like it is because it has to load every time you pull that tab up so i'll, I'll i can tell you right now i pulled in Papenhausen for drink water um and i pulled in uh benny Trevojevic for josh curran i was holding on to curran for so long hoping that there would be new information available to say when the exact date and that the injury that he sustained wasn't that bad however it doesn't look like he's going to be back for some time. As a new update per last week said, he's out for at least a month. So I'm going to have to get rid of him because uh, it's just not worth having someone just under 600 grand sitting there uh, not doing anything for us, which sucks because would have loved to have traded him early had we have known that um, earlier in the piece. There just wasn't any clarity upon how bad the injury was. And at the time, it didn't look that bad. So that's hit us, is what it is. And the other trade we made was Tuolagi from the Tigers, who seems to be scoring... You watch him and you think, gee, this guy would score well on Supercoach. And yes, he is uh, not a... I think he was 330,000 uh, when we did trade him. He didn't really go up by much. He kind of performed underwhelmingly across the season. And so I've brought in uh, Isaiah Papali, swung Josh King down to this slot, Brought him Papali. I mean, either way, I could have him in either spot, but it just looks better if I've got him in my front row. What that means is I've consolidated my front row with the two best front rows in the league, or the two highest scorers, and Haas and Papali, provided neither get injured. We've got Grant as my hooker, absolutely dominating. I think, look, I can, I can go over this team and talk about all the highs and that, but I think most teams are starting to consolidate a very, very um, tip-top shape 13... Um, and, and 
you know, including reserves that are of high value. As you can see across my team, including the reserves, there's not that many cheapies. There's not a lot of cheapies there. I mean, on the bench, yes. Guys that are filling in the holes or making value by being cash cows or being low value. Yeah, 100%. It's just, I'm finding a lot of people are in that same... Um, in that same corridor, they've made money early. There was a lot of cash to grab at the start of the season. A lot of cows needed to be milked. So, um, you know, last week we spoke about not bringing in drink water because if you held someone like a Pappenhausen, you'd, you'd expect them to score better over the five rounds, even though, you know, Pappenhausen would miss the fifth round with Origin. However, we're now four rounds away from Origin. The other alternative I could have, given that I've got 336,000 on the bench, is to bring in Nico Hines or bring in Travojevic, both better scorers um, across the paddock week in, week out. However, given we've only got four weeks, my thought here is that I'll bring him in, four weeks, that is until Origin, I'll bring him in given that he's going to play that fourth week where the other two will not. So, you know, I know, I know there's going to be a lot of coaches bringing in uh, Nico Hines. In fact, most traded in player, 11,000 people. He'll definitely be over the 50% fifty cent, threshold. The only reason I'm not bringing him in is because I've missed the boat. I've missed the boat, and the ownership for him is through the roof. And now I need to, make, I need to get into the bed that I've kind of... Oh, what does that say? Get into the bed that I've kind of sewn. Because I've missed the boat, and he's absolutely killing it, if I jump in, in on him now... All I'm going to do for that position is lock out a role where I can't make any ground on the 10,000 coaches ahead of me simply because we've got the like-for-like like player that everyone owns. He's the most owned player at the moment at over 50%. I need to make ground. So I need to make drastic decisions in order to pick up my team and go up to the top ranks because it's better of t it's better to have shoot your shot than not at all. Right. If if I go with Nico Hines, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull anyone in. The gap may widen, and I may drop a lot of positions because he's been super solid. In fact, I think he's still the highest scorer in Super Coach this season. And when the major when fifty percent of you out there have him and you don't, that hurts a lot. You need players that are highly owned not to score that well in order to um, leapfrog the ranks. So. You know, I could have brought him in. I just didn't want to. I just didn't think that that was the right move for me. I think he's going to score phenomenally across the season. I think he's proven um, his worth and that he's, he's, he's a solid scorer. The fact that you can go on a team that only has um, 12 play that's virtually down a man for the majority of a game against the Warriors and then have another man down uh, because of a 10-minute sim bin and still score the way he did with the amount of possession. Says a lot about him. Says a lot about the Warriors as well. Like, come on, that's that's pathetic. But it says a lot about him, you know. He's he's looking for the ball. He wants to be involved. He's looking for those trick plays, um, offloads. He's running through on the ball. He's following up. Now, he may not score as well as a fullback. However... I still think he's going to do really well, I think, and that's my phone. So I'm not bringing him in, not because he's not the right decision, but because he's not the right decision for my specific team, what I want, what my goals are, and that's to do really well in fantasy. I want to get back in the top 1,000. So I'm in a crux. Who do I go with? Do I go with Tommy Travojevic, who's at 908, or do I go with Drinkwater? Look, I don't think Drinkwater is going to continually score above the scores that he's getting. I don't think that's a true average. I just know he's going to play or play in the buy in the first buy when the others won't. Tommy Trevojevic, I'm not completely sold out on yet. He is losing money fast. I'm sure he's going to score well. It's just at the moment, um, I think he's a little bit too high for me. And if I buy him in now and he flunks out in the next two to three rounds, that's going to be really poor on me. The other decision I could have gone with was James Tedesco, who... Unfortunately, we traded out three weeks ago to bring in Taft to make us money. Um, purely because it looked like Tedesco was averaging much lower. 
um, things weren't working at the Roosters, all of a sudden he's averaged 99, which is often the case. And the reason why I hate trading out guns, it's the reason why I'm going to hold on to Moses, albeit the low two scores that he scored back-to-back weeks. I still think he's a, he's a super coach gun that's going to ultimately score well across the season. So for me, not the trade I'm looking to make. And the only reason why we why we brought out Tedesco was because Taff was going to score well. We knew he was going to hold the fullback position in Latrell's absence. He's going to take on the kicking role. And so far, he's done pretty well. I mean, he's made uh, quite a few bucks. He's projected to make another 43. He's doing really well. So I could have brought in Tedesco, but we know Tedesco is playing Origin. They've already said he's holding the number one spot. Uh, I believe it was Freddie Fitlow last week. So don't want to bring him in. Again, Tedesco gone. So... I've gone for the third best option, which I think is drink water. Now, there's also Meany, uh, given how long Pap is out. I, look, having watched Meany, he's a speed star. He's got a good step. But he's not the type of guy to break the line like a Pappenhausen or like a Tedesco or like a Trojevic. Yes, you know, last year we saw Nico Hines go into that fullback role in Pappenhausen's absence, and he played the house down, one of the best scorers over that period. But I just can't see it a meanie. If you've watched enough of meanie, solid player. Um, great for the Storm roster, obviously. Just can't see him being the fix I need in my squad. So I think Drinkwater is going to be my pick, you know, purely because of that origin. I need that origin week to be a big week for me where I really pull in some of these other coaches. So I'm picking up Drinkwater now. His break even's 30 bound to make a little bit more money still at least next week hopefully he doesn't go down overall but that's what my team's looking at this week um ladies and gentlemen let me know down below uh what you're thinking um hopefully my net is fixed by the time um i have to do another video next week but let me know what you're thinking there's some unfortunate circumstance this week tas is out we knew that was going to happen. I'm, I'm holding him, negative 29. It only takes one injury or one player not playing that well and to get dropped. Next thing you know, he's back in there. I'm not going to trade out Stags. I was asked that on a forum the other week, would I consider bringing out Stags given that he has played poorly in the last week? My answer no. Yes, he's going to lose money. Guns, you got to hold. Um... Unless you've got a good reason like bringing in a cash cow. But right at the moment, I think everyone's reached that peak, um, that peak, you know, team value of, of just having guns across the paddock. Uh, one other consideration is bringing in Tohu Harris for 608 grand, I believe it was. He is playing second row where traditionally he scores better at the lock position, so he may go down. I'm not crash hot on uh, Tohu Harris just yet, purely because I don't think he's going to be match fit. He's been out for almost a year, and anyone knows, anyone who's played sport at any level, amateur, semi-pro, pro, is that when you're back, just getting your head in that mindset. There's no amount of training that can prepare you for an actual game, except experience. So I think he's going to have to suck up you know, and get ga- you know, he'll be gassed for the first few weeks. He'll have to suck up the big ones. But he's not a buy for me just yet. I may bring him in the following week because I think he's going to be a good scorer for this second row spot. Just have to evaluate how that all works out. It's funny how my team now is filled with all these CT dubs in my second row when I absolutely hate that. But it is, it's the way this season's worked out. But yeah, that's my team in a nutshell, guys. I hope um, this has helped you. I hope um, your team's worked out the way you want it to. And, um, yeah, I hope um, you end up getting the scores you want. I just, I need to get back in there, guys. Best of luck. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe. Take it easy. Whoosh.